last terror incident. So this is a real threat. Does he run away from this, too? I, I, I think he tries to buy time through the election. I think that's what he's trying to do. Let's not address this until November 7th or 8th. And I'm not sure what he does then. I mean, because right now, as, as uh, the prime minister says, they're so close. Uh, they're probably even closer. They may even have the bomb. They, they, there's no reason for them to, to, to say what they're going to do. They've already said we're testing long-range missiles that could maybe uh, hit Israel, maybe even go further. Look, we have... The U.S. has 5,000 nuclear warheads. Israel has somewhere between 100 and 200 nuclear warheads. Maybe the Iranians would listen to that rhetoric a little bit more than drawing a picture on it. No offense to the prime minister. Um, I, show the number of warheads you have. Yeah, you know, Kimberly, er, earlier What's in the that? week, President Obama said, we will walk aside of you, alongside of Israel in mm -hmm. the peace process. Not... We will stand behind you. We will back you up. But he did say, well, Israel's an ally. It seems like he's trying to shore up more Jewish support again until after the election. What? We will walk aside it, you, but, but we will not meet with you. Right. If I'm Netanyahu, d don't you feel a little bit insecure? Of, of course you do. I don't think that he in any way, shape or form can rely on the United States under the present you know, direction of this administration. And that's a real crisis of consequence here that they're facing because this isn't a political decision for the Israelis or for Netanyahu. It's a matter of survival. For President Obama, it's a matter of politics. What should he do? What's popular? What can he do in terms of the votes? He certainly has to appease, right, mm -hmm. some of the voting electorate here that would be upset with him in regards to his policy with uh, uh, Israel. But this is really a no-win situation because we have to support them. Without mm -hmm. their support and a mutual accord between the two countries, we're in very dire circumstances in the Middle now, East. Now, Ahmadinejad said he's just developing, developing this, Greg, for peaceful purposes, for energy. But why would an oil-rich country like Iran need that kind of energy. And he tried to contact Bibi, but he's not on Yahoo. <laughs> uh, Facebook. What do we do? What does America do? I say okay. the nuclear option. Send Iran another videotape message from Obama. I know it's extreme, but it's the only kind of message they understand. Well, remember when <laughs> President Obama said he would actually sit down with him, Bob? Remember that? He said, I'll just sit down. We'll talk. We'll chat. How's that worked out? The... Uh uh, I just want to point out that Netanyahu has tried to get his allies, Israel's allies around the country, to, to, around the world to underscore this red line, and not one of them has come forward. And the reason they haven't, and the reason he's going public now, is he's under a lot of political pressure back home from the Likud parties and the religious parties. They want to get their allies out front of this red line, and the red line is very dangerous, while, by the way, the sanctions are working in crippling uh, Tehran. Uh, Iran. But they're crippling them economically, and right. we've seen a decline in their oil. We've mm -hmm. seen four rounds of rounds of sanctions, but that hasn't slowed down the weapons process. Well, we don't know that. I mean, that's that's uh, Israel and the United States. Israel, particularly, has done a very good job of taking out their engineers. There's been a lot. They've been behind on their centrifuge development. It, it, it's, I, are you willing to, you know, basically bet the world that, I, I that think, they're not I, that listen, close to getting Israel's going to do what Israel's going to do, and they can't do it without the United States, so the United States will be in it. I say we send a delegation of Occupy Wall Street streeters there <laughs> to speak to them about peace. Oh, my goodness. And by then, they will blow themselves up. Well, speaking about allies, you brought up allies. If I were Israel, I'd be a little puzzled because we thought that Mubarak was an ally of ours. We ousted him. Now, when President Obama was asked in an interview with Telemundo if Egypt is an ally, here's what he said. I don't think that uh, we would consider them an ally, uh, but we don't consider them an enemy. Maybe someone should give the president a flow chart or yeah. a tree graph, Eric, on who our allies are and who they're not. I mean, is Egypt, are they not, the Muslim Brotherhood? Is, did someone tell me, did I miss it, or has President Obama not gone to Israel yet? Has he not stepped foot in Israel? I'm pretty sure he hasn't, right? Too busy. Yeah. Not as president, right? Kay. But he has gone to, to Cairo, and, and he has gone to several other places. He's made time for some of our other allies. Israel is... is in, amazingly important to keeping the peace in the Middle East. If Israel goes, or if Israel's um, taken over or bombed by Iran, the, the whole area, you want to talk about caliphate? Mm -hmm. Caliphate too. Yeah, right. Here, hold on, Bob. I want you to react to this. Here's what Obama did say about the status of Israel as an ally. Now, I feel an obligation, not pressure, but obligation, to make sure that we're in close consultation with the Israelis uh, on these issues because it affects them deeply. They're one of our closest allies in the region. One so, of now, so, so actions speak louder than words, though. But let's take a look at this map uh, of the Middle East. Bob, maybe you can identify who's an ally and who's not to help <laughs> President Obama <laughs> Put on your out a little Bob. bit. 
Uh, He's not sure about Egypt. Okay, now Turkey is supposedly an ally, but remember they voted against <laughs> sanctions against Iran, so... I can, I can, can you help first, him out? For, first of all, I think it's, it's, it's not right to say that America ousted him, or his people ousted him, and his generals did. But the answer to that question is Jordan. We supported it. Jordan, Jordan is an incredibly key ally of ours. And by the way, Egypt, without having Jordan. that... Jordan? Yeah, they happen. I'm, they I'm not laughing right at Jordan. I'm laughing that that's what you, that's what you come up with. How about, how about Jordan's important, but so is Jordan's Israel, important. and so was Egypt. Georgia. I'm not, I'm not yes, sure if Egypt, e Egypt. I'm not even sure if we're even Egypt allies with Egypt critical. anymore. Egypt retired from critical. the NBA years ago. <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's just really quick. Kimberly. Yes, the King of Jordan has also always been a strong ally. However, his posi position is much uh, weakened now. He's under tremendous pressure by the Muslim Brotherhood and other forces, and so that is not something we can count on right now. And the Saudis are right. mad at us as well. So sorry, well, we're in a bad. bad. And, the, and the point is, this is bigger than Israel. This this fight that we're facing is much bigger than Israel. Israel hasn't been around as long as the hatred from radical Islamic jihadists have. All right, coming up.